How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope it's keeping well. Hope it's keeping fresh on a lovely Wednesday evening. Um, final score, Liverpool 3, Southampton 0. Uh, a very convincing performance for Liverpool tonight, especially with the majority of them being Klopp's kids tonight as well. And uh, also, big up to Lewis, Lewis, uh, Lewis Kumas. First goal for Liverpool on his debut. And also Jaden Dance. Amazing two goals he took very well in two appearances now for Liverpool Football Club. That's a hundred percent goal and goal per game ratio. So you might as well retire now, retire now, just do whatever you want after that. No 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 look. Uh, perfect for him honestly. I'm very proud for the the two eighteen year olds that came out tonight and really took their chances when you need to. I thought they were outstanding. And uh, we'll just talk about the goals first, then we'll talk about the their overall game. Um the first goal really was uh, a lovely, lovely play from Bobby Clark, who was excellent as well today on the left side of midfield. Um, took the ball in from the left side of left side of the pitch. Uh, torn one of the, the, the Southampton players inside and out. Plays the ball into Kumas on the left on the eighteen yard box on the left hand side. Kumas then takes a few touches into the middle of the D, of the D. Takes a shot on. Gets lucky with the deflection as he puts it, as he as he shoots on goal and just puts it past the goalkeeper and the, he didn't even flinch. You know, a nice little goal, the Anfield Road end, the new Anfield Road end now, as we should say. And he took his goal really well. And uh, I'm sure his old man, Jason uh, Jason Kumas, that's his name, yeah, who um, I'm sure will be watching him very proud of his son tonight for scoring that goal in his debut. Um, because he came from the cinema, the Liverpool Academy as well. Didn't quite make it, but obviously made a, made a name for himself in the lower league. So, But all in all... Um, yeah, very proud, proud family. The Kumas family should be tonight, and also the Dan's family should be very proud as well. Um, let's have a talk about the two goals. The second, the second of uh, Jaden Dan's two goals was when Smallbone was taking the ball. It was loose. It was he gave the ball away, and Elliot basically has a couple of touches, nice little touches. Sees Jaden Dan's making the the diagonal run from the middle into the right into the right position, attacking the cup. Then as uh, Jaden Dance is for one on one with the goalkeeper, chips it over, a little dink into the back of the net, in front of the Anfield faithful and the cop as well, and gets his first goal for Liverpool. Amazing. Um this was actually his first touch as well, believe it or not. So I mean well just just I mean I'm sure he's gonna be telling telling his future grandkids about that moment for, for, for a long, long time. His future kids as well, future grandkids, etc. You know what I mean? And I'm sure the dance, Neil Dance's son, by the way. Um, Neil Dance was a player that didn't really come to Liverpool's academy, as I mentioned there in previous videos. He came from, I think he was at Blackburn, and just kind of, you know, was here, there, and everywhere, and then the lower leagues, trying to make a career. Never really made it at the top level of the Premier League, but I'm sure he'd be a, a very proud ex-footballer's dad as well today. You know, um, so, uh, I mean, well, amazing. I think Dance, Jay, um, Neil Dance and his family were in the stands and they watching that, so I'm sure they'd be very proud of their son, really. And then the tour goal was just a, a, stip, a typical striker's finish, really. Lovely little poach into the bottom court, uh, into the, sorry, into the back of the net. Um, ball whipped on play. Bradley goes in for a shot for an outside of his right foot. It was really good as well. And, you know, I don't think you need. To, I don't think there's ever been one bad game Conor Bradley's had for Liverpool since he's come into the team at the tour of the new year. I mean, well, he's done really, really well. He's been kicked up and down the pitch on that right-hand side, but yeah, still plays on. And I'm telling you one thing, he does his whole family proud. I'm sure his old man's looking down from heaven right now, saying how proud of his son he is. I mean, he's just outstanding, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, uh, unlucky with the shot. But then a loose the ball comes in, Dan's basically goes in at the right time. Zoom, in the back of the net. Strikes on his right foot. And the uh, game set and match from, there, from Liverpool's point of view. You know what I mean? Um, you know all about these games when you're when you're eighteen, nineteen, twenty, or even seventeen, right? You have to take your chances when they're given to you like that. You know what I mean? And Jaden Dans, I wouldn't be surprised now if he's he he features against Forest now on Saturday evening, or Saturday afternoon. He's in with a shout now. I mean, he's definitely going to be in the manager's thoughts after that after that cameo appearance for sure. You know what I mean? But um, let's look at the other players tonight. You're doing well. I thought um. Obviously, Karate done well for the second 45. Fridge only played the first 45. 
Uh, Bobby Clark was really good tonight. I have to say, uh, James McCollum done put a shift in the midfield as well. Joe Gomez, who has always been very versatile around the back four, whether he be playing a right back, left back, centre back. But today and for tonight and for once, for not for one night only, hopefully, um, he plays a defensive midfielder, and I thought he done well. He held his own. You know what I mean? Every time he got the ball, everyone was just the whole crowd was just begging for him to shoot. He did shoot once, but it went full high and wide into the Anfield Road end and um, I think everyone just wants him to get that first goal so that's the monkey off his back you know what I mean but like once I mean once he gets that first goal then I don't think he's going to be bragging on too much you know what I mean I mean well amazing do you know what I mean like uh, also special mention to Trey Awanye the 16 year old who we signed from Leicester in the summer and uh, he made his first appearance coming on from Harvey Area for the last 12 minutes of the game um, Katie Gordon also came on the last 90, oh no, for the last 4 or 5. Um, although he's had his troubles with injuries in the last few years, but it's good to see him back on, on the pitch as well. Um, thankfully, no injuries and no suspensions going into the Forest game now. Diaz wasn't, didn't get a single minute. I'm thinking he should be alright for Forest then, to be fair. Hopefully, he'll be okay for that game. And uh, Cody Gakbo, I thought, done well tonight. I think he was a bit frustrated with his, with his own performance. Like, probably didn't bag a couple of goals, as he would have liked. But he has another chance to do that in the next game, for sure. Um, it'd be an interesting dynamic. What uh, I think we know with the back four, set in stone, the goalkeeper. So, um, you hope... Well, we know Gravel Bear should be out. You're hoping Endo is okay for the Forest game, because we're badly going to be needing him for that. Especially away from home, when, in that ground, where it could be a bit... Could be rocky, it could be scrappy, and you know you need some players that are just going to be very dogged and do the dirty work, whatever you need them to. So I think uh, if Endo's fit, and then him and McAllister, and probably probably more likely would be Elliot, I'd say. Yeah, probably would be Elliot. I think uh, maybe McAllister on the left, Elliot on the right, probably would, would be the worst case of worst show we can go for. Maybe even Bobby Clark might start. You know what I mean? He was taken off early, which. Probably gives an indication that maybe he might be, maybe you might start with him on the left and McAllister and Endo on the right, which I wouldn't be against, by the way. I think, I think Bobby Clark with them two experienced midfielders, internationals as well. Don't forget, beside him, should be able to say, look, should be able to look after him, say, right, look, move, go, do this, blah, blah. and obviously the back line being experienced as well should be able to help him out. In that regard as well. So um, yeah, um, a very good night's work for the kids tonight. Um. Hopefully they get another chance to do like this. I don't, I'm not too sure now what they will. But, um, yeah, a good performance. And let's just talk about Southampton. I mean, the first half, I thought they were excellent. Even though they conceded the first goal, they, they conceded, uh, the first goal in, the, in the first half. And then the second half, they had a couple of chances as well to score from. just didn't take them. The first half, they could have scored three goals, to be fair. Um and I think Kelleher had done really well between the sticks when he needed to. One of their chances came, hit the post. One of their chances came from free header. And one of the chances was one-on-one -on -one with Kelleher, which Kelleher saves low, uh, low and hard as well. So um, Kelleher done really well tonight. Um, definitely going to be in the Ireland squad. Uh, he should be starting for me uh, for, for the games against Belgium and Switzerland. John O'Shea has just been announced interim. Um, today, so I'm sure he'll be watching very closely, and uh, I know he's going to be in from. He's not going to be the permanent manager. Well, that's I'll be doing another video in the international break about that, or uh, or the managerial situation. Because I'm happy for John O'Shea getting getting the chance to do it for a couple of games, but it's just the search has just been an absolute shambles from from start to finish. Really, you know what I mean? But anyway, enough about Ireland. We'll talk about them in in uh, due time. Uh, and we talk about are we going to the draw now? Um, so Liverpool will face Manchester United on St Patrick's Day at Old Trafford. Well, that'll be very fiery. You know I mean? um, definitely the pubs will be packed for that game for sure. Um, and then obviously the other games tonight: Man United won one 0 obviously against Forest with a late goal from Casemiro. Wolves won one 0 against Brighton, so the Wolves will be facing Coventry. Uh, Chelsea. Uh, bounce back, shall we say, from their game on the weekend against us with a 3-2 win against Leeds. Uh, so Chelsea will be facing Leicester. That could be a very um, 
interesting game that Chelsea and Leicester. You don't know how that can go. You know what I mean? Leicester are flying high in the championship, although they obviously got automatic promotion on their sides. So you never know how that game can play out. Uh, Brighton and Coven, uh, sorry, Wolves and Coventry is a Midlands derby, so uh, that could be very fiery too. You know what I mean? So Wolverhampton and Coventry, and they're, they're, I wouldn't say that they're, they're near enough to where this. I think they're not Birmingham, but they're near enough to Birmingham. So a Midlands game for quarterfinals should be fiery as well for them. And then we got Manchester City against Newcastle, which, um. I mean, Newcastle got away with one the other night, but I mean, they haven't really performed well as of late. They've let in a lot of goals, even though they've scored a lot of goals. But I mean, defensively, they've been a complete uh, unrecognisable since last year. You know what I mean? Uh, but then again, I mean, it's a, it's an FA Cup quarter final. A lot can happen in those games. I know it's the way the Etihad, but you just never know. You never know how Newcastle might turn up. I mean, City are chasing a double treble, which is very difficult for them to do. And they're also chasing the four in a row in the league. So, I mean, I mean, I mean, okay, our game is 50-50 with Man United, even though Man United has been poor this season. You know what I mean? So, a lot of these cups ties are, I think they're touch and go, or what can happen. And anything can happen, really, to be fair. You know, as it is. Um, yeah, so, uh, just a final word. Um Big, uh, big, big statement win from Liverpool's kids tonight, and yeah, uh, hopefully some of them will get a chance against Forest. Depending on how the game might be a hard, it should be a harder game because obviously Forest are fighting for survival. So, um, it could be one of those games we just have to kind of dig deep, and then when we get a chance, we take it, and we get the result, and we move on to the next. So, um, yeah, I'll be talking about the Forest game uh, on Friday night as I do my starting eleven prediction and preview. So, uh, so thanks very much for watching the video, guys. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to this. Like the video if you're new to this as well. Also, click on the comment section down below about who you thought stood up for you tonight. Uh, if I was going to say man of the match, I'll give it to Jaden Dance for his cameo. Uh, 12 minutes for his two goals. Well, outstanding play for him. Um, and also click yeah, I said also click the notifications about the next videos I'll be doing. Doing a video Friday night in regards to the North Forest game, and also doing a video on Saturday, late Saturday afternoon, uh, for the post match reaction as well. So please tune in for that, or stay tuned in for that, should I say? So uh, yeah, in the meantime and the tween time, all the best up the Reds. Have a good day. Have a good night. Very watching this. All the best. Cheers.